Welcome everybody to week two. Um, one of the things that I'll do over the course of this semester is I will, at the beginning of each week, or early in uh, each week, I will post a, a lecture that uh, is designed to kind of remind you of what you need to do to be successful in any particular week throughout the semester. So this particular week is week two. Um, in order to be successful in week two, you have to work your way through all of the material in section two. As uh, you will see when you open up section two, section two is about the biological explanations of gender. Um, uh, you'll find in the section three lectures um, on biological explanations of gender. I'll get into basically what they'll talk about here in a quick second. I'll give you a quick overview. Um, uh, then you'll see six audio files that say gender and power. Um, you're going to have uh, some supplemental lectures coming from Stel Friedman uh, throughout the course of the semester uh, dealing with issues of gender. Um, each of these audio files is about five minutes a piece. Ultimately, it ends up being about 30 minutes of lecture. Um, so work your way through um, Estelle Friedman's lecture and, of course, uh, the surprising neuroscience of gender, equal or gender inequality, um, Janet Crawford's TED Talk. You'll also see a uh, section two quiz and week two is your first discussion question. Um, the discussion question is, uh, are gender differences biological or cultural? Choose a side and argue the legitimacy of the position using as much evidence as possible to do so. Make sure you thoroughly explain both sides as you justify your response. So, um, uh, work your way through the material, take the section quiz, and post your first discussion question. Uh, now, remember with the discussion questions, this is a two. Uh, it's a substantive response. Look at the criteria uh, in the syllabus and in the uh, discussion post itself to see exactly what you need to do. Um, and you also need to respond to one of your t uh, one of your classmates' uh, discussion posts as well. Um, so, as far as this chapter is concerned. The biological explanations of difference between men and women and Darwin's law of natural selection in particular are given greater precedence in society than social explanations related to gender and privilege. This works to legitimate social structural segregation of men and women and justify the inequalities between them uh, because any advancement of women into the man's world is simply considered unnatural. Evidence for social Darwinist beliefs about gender differences derived primarily from three areas, the evolution uh, or evolution, brain studies, and hormones. As I said, you'll find uh, three lectures in uh, section two discussing these in further detail. Um, the evolutionary imperative that biological differences between men and women determine social arrangements um, and not vice versa focuses on uh, the discussions of the drive for procreation. Uh, men and women develop different reproductive strategies based on their biological imperatives to ensure their genes are passed on successfully. Women seek out one man who will protect and provide for a child or children, demanding monogamy for security and lifelong provision of resources. Men, on the other hand, seek out as many women as possible to increase the odds that one of them gets pregnant and produces a male heir. This theory also justifies social positions for men and women and ultimately inequalities uh, such as rape. Uh, we'll talk a lot about rape in this, uh, uh, this course. Um, it, it, it's, it's quite interesting the role that rape plays in um, gender construction and social inequality between men and women. Uh, this theory, however, is based on limited evidence and what can be considered philosophical discussions. Much of the evidence is selective and even flawed ignoring information that contradicts it, like for instance, that the clitoris plays no role in reproduction, but it is simply a pleasure source, then why is it there as far as this procreation argument is 
um, is concerned. Uh, we can also look at social how social Darwin has failed to address alternative explanations about men's and women's behaviors, relying more on circular reasoning. Of course, the second arena of evidence used is the brain, particularly the belief that men and women have differences in brain development, usage, and ability. From studies trying to locate the source of women's emotions or men's anger to studies wondering if size or weight is more indicative of intelligence, we know that discussions about brain differences are usually biased simply because they focus on locating differences instead of similarities. When you're looking for differences, you'll certainly find them. This is a, a no-no in science. Don't go out looking for a specific thing. Um, you'll tend to skew your data to fit your preconceived notions. Uh, you ask questions and then you allow the data to speak. You don't transform the data in a way that favors your interpretation. Um, uh, the, the emphasis on difference, of course, continues to persist today, focusing on three areas, the right-left hemisphere difference, the connective tissue between the hemisphere difference and different parts used for similar functions. Um, as with past studies, these derive from the standpoint of male superiority. This is why the rise of feminism is so important. It challenges the uh, enterprise of science of taking the perspective of the male um, uh, versus comparing female brains with uh, the, with a male standard um, and being much more uh, attuned to the female social constructions of the world as well. Um, and how male hierarchies are uh, an essential part of the social construction of knowledge. Even more important, when identifiers of intelligence favor women, they are excused, explained socially, or changed. When studies change the focus or standard, the general theme tends towards the superiority of male brains. Um, a third arena of evidence used to justify biological explanations concerns the study of hormones, emphasized in two areas, embryo development and puberty. Some researchers believe that the testosterone baths that lead to female babies later life, uh, uh, to a female's, female baby's later life, tomboy behavior, and makes male babies that don't get it more feminine. Um, other research focuses on post-pubescent testosterone and male aggression or estrogen and female emotionality. However, much of the research on hormones relies on limited findings once again and fails to address all the potential problems and or explanations for the differences between men and women. Uh, in fact, some studies actually point to hormonal fluctuations being directly impacted by socialization and or gender roles. So once you identify certain things and you start treating children certain ways, hormonal responses um, uh, result. So, as I said, um, in order to be successful in week two, you need to work your way through the material. Um, I just gave you a basic, basic look at uh, the three sections of lecture. Um, uh, Estelle Friedman's lecture on gender and power, um, the section two quiz, and the week two discussion question. If by chance you have not had a chance to um, finish last week's quiz, please do. And if you have any questions, shoot me uh, an email or get in contact with me uh, any way you can. Hopefully you're having a great week and I look forward to hearing from you.